Batman Beyond, Return of the Joker, the film which is connected to the only show that I haven't covered inside the DCAU, the DC Anime Universe. So it's interesting going backwards, isn't it? Anyway, this movie I had fun watching or re watching. Uh, it's a fun popcorn, entertaining film that's able to go dark, and I mean dark, but it's able to go light when it gets out of that darkness. And it makes sense because you got Terry. You know, Terry Guinness is Batman Beyond, he's Batman of the Future. And he is not like Bruce. You know, Bruce is, you know, Bruce Wayne. He is, you know, dark, booty, you know, Bruce Wayne that we all know. Well, Terry is basically Spider Man in a Batman costume. He is youthful. He is quippy. He is all those type of youthful kind of thing. I always like, you know, this is people pre quit. This is a comic book thing, by the way, a little bit. It's kind of like these people kind of knew that Grayson was going to be Robin, one, you know, in like five, six years time. You know, <laughs> like, you know, it's like they were thinking beyond, you know, it. I was like, yeah, it's basically Dick Grayson as Robin, you know, before that happened. Anyway. So, so the film kind of gets dark, but it also gets slightly light just because of the nature of your main character. Anyway. And, you know, the story is just quite simple. It's just Batman find the Joker. It's Terry and Giddens face the Joker for the first time. The big threat. While Barbara and Bruce Wayne are like, Um, there? And this guy is meant to be dead. So how is he alive? Well, Terry's trying to figure that out. They kind of are pushing Terry away and, you know, knowing the Joker, knowing how what he's capable of being and, and saying to Terry, like, all the circle powers that you really face are nothing ten times of what he, this guy is. And because of it, it leads up to interesting dialogues, interesting characterizations, stuff that makes this film also wonderfully to watch out, along with all the popcorn nature that this film, in, this film is. But I the best moments of the movie. Let's be honest, people who, are, who have seen this, it's it's the flashbacks. It's those fifteen minutes, the fifteen minutes of finding out what actually happened. The final showdown between Bruce and Joker, and how dark and I mean dark and twisted it got to be. It is a mix of a heart. It's a horror movie. It's uh, there's great dialogue, definitely for Joker, I mean how Mark Campbell voices those lines are just like perfect to perfection, you know. Oh the stands of Battle Range, you're just a little boy in the corner crying for mommy and daddy. I would love it was so thick, oh what the heck I'll love anyway, you know, I'm not going to laugh because, you know, it's like oh, midnight and, you know, I don't want to wake up the neighbors kind of thing. But those, it, it just, those 15 minutes is the best part of the movie. And, and when we go back outside, you know, in present time, you know, it cut, you know, it goes back into the popcorn nature, but there's more depth, there's more, you know, what's in state and you know, the meat of it more. And so you're, you're with Terry trying, basically trying to stop the Joker. Now, the only criticism I have with this movie is satellites and Joker kind of, kind of do not mix. It just doesn't feel Joker right. We get it, it's Batman in the future and how they try to weave it in. It just doesn't work. Does not work. Um, but outside of it, yeah, enjoyable time. You know, it's a good, like, sit down. What's a, a fun Batman anime movie and yeah, I mean Unsemi so I heard the Anali isn't you know, the season three of Anali, the last season, wasn't as a Anali. So this this one's a good like send off goodbye to the show. So yeah. A good 
fun anime popcorn type of film. 